Darren, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I can't hear Darren though, so I have to stop. Okay, great. Well, so it'll be a little, little echoey. Anyway, Darren was actually my teacher, one of my teachers when I got certified in NRT. And he's one of my favorite people. He's an amazing healer. And I learned a lot from him over the years, so I'm excited he can be a part of the conference with us. Again, June 2nd and 3rd at LAX Weston. And we'll be putting the link um, in the description because there's a special early bird price right now. So Darren, um, we're going to be talking about the mechanism of chronic disease and what you can do about it today. And also about ketosis and how that um, links to um, helping the body repair from chronic illness. So tell me, uh, explain what is the mechanism of chronic disease? Well, it's basically too much waste in the blood and not enough oxygen. Mm -hmm. So in the 1930s, they knew that part of it was lactate. And they knew that there were other waste in the blood, but they hadn't really described it yet by like 1931, 32. But um, they knew that there was some sort of acidic uh, component to it. And they call it, so they called it lactic acidosis. Oh. So if you, if you just take that and extrapolate that through you know, the last 90 years, 80, 90 years, then you can see that there's more than just a few wastes that'll end up in the blood. They're give you know, how many chemicals, tens of thousands of chemicals, dozens of heavy metals, and just put all that together and you're basically starving cells and they die or they turn to cancer. Oh, wow. So there's really a link to cancer with this situation. Yeah, the link is, um, well, you can have like, cells that are starving of oxygen and they're toxic so they're trying to dump waste into the blood but the blood's already too toxic and they're trying to grab oxygen but there's no oxygen there oh wow so, so cells will then um <clears throat> they'll convert to a different form of energy metabolism mm -hmm. which is which is anaerobic so there's no oxygen and they start burning other fuels like for example lactate so lactate fermentation and then they, that's cancer. It turns into cancer. Oh, wow. So that, yeah, so the, the cells that don't do that would be primarily muscle cells. So just think of the heart. So the heart is um, always beating. It always needs, needs oxygen. And it doesn't turn into – the muscle cells don't turn to cancerous. They just die, and you get a heart attack. Oh, wow. So you, never, you never hear of, uh, of heart cancer, right? No, you, you don't. Hear, that's true. Right, liver Good cancer, you know, cancer, but never heart cancer. As a matter of fact, I looked this up, and there was one heart cancer doctor in the United States. There are zero dollars being spent on research for heart cancer. It's just, it just doesn't ever happen. And the one heart cancer specialist, he's, like, not very busy. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the heart muscle cells, they just die. You end up with a heart attack. They don't convert. It takes about six to... 24 hours for a cell to convert from normal metabolism into a cancerous metabolism. So, yeah, that's, that's incredible. So tell me, how, how did you find this? How did you discover this? Well, I had black mold poisoning. This is now, it's been two years. As a matter of fact, it was February 3rd, 2016. I thought I was dying. I was in my bed. I only slept like three hours at night. My blood pressure is 155 over 95. My heart's just uh. pounding like it's not like a, a flutter. It was pounding. And um, <clears throat> so I, you know, I, I'd been trying to fix it for four months before that. And my symptoms just got worse and worse and worse. So after that night, I um, was reading through some of my old books and uh, notes, and I found a series of notes, and I took some supplements, and two days later, I felt better. Well, I knew that uh, I needed to study the guy that made those supplements and yeah. those supplements. Those supplements were, were from 1934. Wow. So then I, I had to figure out, like, what was he thinking? Like, what was his research? What, what was he reading? Yeah. So I, purchased, I, I, so I purchased a bunch of old books. Nice. Like these, for example, oh. <laughs> to, figure out, <laughs> to figure out what the heck they were saying. Yeah. And they, and they were talking about um, trying to fix lactic acidosis. Now, they didn't really know too much about causes like that's mercury amazing or... that that was happening at that time yeah yeah it was and then yeah and then it all went away all that research went away so do like you I remember think... that i had black mold when i was living in that house in studio city did i ever uh, talk yeah. to you about that you that, did that yeah. was crazy i mean i thought i was dying too and, and i remember um 
my dog actually had a heart attack when we lived in that house and somebody happened to be there that knew how to do CPR on dogs or that would have been the end of it. And she sustained brain damage because her, she was so much smaller and the damage that was occurring from breathing in the black mold really caused a lot of trauma to her body as well as mine. I, I was, um, I was having trouble breathing. I had heart palpitations and I was choking and uh, it took it took months for it to really you know recover from that. It's very uh, traumatizing for the body. It is, yeah. I mean, so you got the mold that spreads like with tentacles. Yeah. And then then the mold makes mycotoxins. So you got to kill the mold, drain out the dead mold, and then you got to clean out the myco. And cleaning out mycotoxins may take you know, a year or two. Yeah, and a lot of people don't even know when they have mold. They don't know how to look for it, which is kind of scary. Right. And so I remember this. So you were telling me about it and you were looking into the building codes and stuff. And they said you just had to paint yeah. over the mold. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. Right. According to the housing department, as long as the landlord paints over the visible mold, they don't care. And the thing is, when you paint over it, it doesn't kill it. You still have mold. So then you're dealing with you're breathing in mold spores and you have to get it professionally irradiated. We're going to have a mold specialist talk about that at the conference, too. So that should be exciting. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to have him come on as well. But yeah. Darren, um, we have a question for you from Tally. She wants to know, why do muscle cells just die? Well, <clears throat> muscle cells just die because um, they can't convert. Let's see. They need the sugar to, or they need some sort of fuel, but primarily sugar to, um, to contract or to, to move, to, to contract and relax. So instead of um, sitting idly for six hours, like maybe a liver cell could, or a skin cell, like an, on the nose or something, you, you could just sit there and wait to convert over to anaerob anaerobic metabolism, whereas a cell needs to be able to move, especially the heart. So, that's, so when a heart cell is suffering this condition of lactic acidosis, you can have just like a small part of the heart that's really being affected and then that part dies and then the heart like changes its beat and then you, then it throws a clot and then you could die from the clot but it actually started as lactic acidosis so that's my best answer i don't know if i answered that that well enough, but <laughs> it has to do with can a, can a cell sit for a while can it sit for and otto warburg he's the guy that figured all this out it took him uh eight years he got the nobel prize for this in 1931 but he said it takes um maybe 36 hours for a cell to convert over to being cancerous. Wow. So, I mean, you wouldn't think. Yeah, but, but I've read since then is, you know, somebody else said like six, eight hours. So, so Darren, um, who has this? Who has this situation? Well, anybody with a chronic disease has lactic acidosis. Now, there's another mechanism, which is alkalosis, but that's kind of rare. But um, anybody can create lactic acidosis just by exercising. Oh, so interesting. Your... So what does that mean right. for the body? Well, it's a natural condition of too much waste in the blood, not enough oxygen. So you're saying and... exercising regularly helps your body dump that waste instead of it sitting in there causing cell death, right? No, exercise creates the waste. Oh. <laughs> but, your, but your liver and your cells have to be functioning well enough to clean that garbage up. So that's right. why people with fibromyalgia feel worse for days after they exercise and they just don't exercise. They just can't. Right. They yeah. So I've bad. had patients like that where they're so drained, they can't even do any kind of exercise. Right. So it comes down to actually fixing the cells. And then when you're feeling better, then you can start to exercise. Yeah. Well, that and makes you, sense. Yeah. Then your body can process uh, the garbage that you've created, especially from the breakdown of muscles. And then, the, of course, the acid from acid is part of the uh, the waste products made from uh, burning sugar. So that, that all makes sense. Now, since we're talking about waste and, and all of these heavy metals and so forth, tell me a little bit about how vaccines would impact the body and how that would get addressed <clears throat> through this mechanism you're talking about. Well, vaccines are just... Um, an introduction of more waste. So formaldehyde, mm -hmm. aluminum, or mercury. And like and an overwhelming yes. amount of uh, also pathogens, not just the metals, right? Right. Which brings up a whole other point. So it, after I figured out, so it was October of 2016 when I found the mold in my office. Ugh, unbelievable. Okay. So it was, it was about 
10 months after that when I found a reference from a book um, about mold. And she said that mold creates lactate and uric acid and carbon dioxide and other waste products similar to lactic acidosis. And so anyways, <clears throat> you can extrapolate that to other organisms. They're just creating waste, right? So a virus or fungus, parasite, bacteria, and then people suffer throughout their whole body. Yeah. They want to clean that garbage out. So Especially vaccine, if it doesn't you know, get caught. Right. So vaccine, you're injecting um, an organism that could potentially like replicate from there and take off, if you will, if your immune system can't handle it. Right. So if a vaccine is given to someone whose immune system isn't strong enough, in essence, it could actually give them the illness, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that happens all the time. That's why so many people who get the flu shots end up getting the flu. Right. Well, that's yeah. not fun. So, no. what yeah, you know, it? I have, I, I'm gonna, I got, yeah, yeah, I have one, one of my practitioners in my office. She's a farm D, so she's got her doctorate in pharmacy. Yeah. And she worked at a flu vaccine clinic in uh, Virginia, where, she, where she was raised, mm -hmm. and um, so she was, she was injecting people, and then people came back and said, "Now I have the flu." So she was trained by her bosses at the pharmacy to tell them, well, you probably had the flu just before you came in here. And oh, my God. <laughs> that makes me that's crazy. That's part of their, yeah. That's just so crazy to me why people do that. Ugh, it's frustrating. Um, <laughs> let me just turn this back on to see if we have any more comments or questions before we move on. All right, you guys, feel free to ask questions because Darren can answer you live on camera on Facebook Live. So, Darren, what does it take to reverse this situation? Well, um, it depends on the cause. So there's three main causes. Oh, okay, talk about that. Yeah, toxins and then bugs, which could be fungus, parasite, virus, bacteria. And then the third one is excess sugar metabolism. So the body's burning sugar for too long. And most people are burning sugar the, every day of their life, you know, and, and then now they're 55 and now they have a heart attack and they don't know why. Uh, well, it's because you've been burning sugar this whole time. So when you, um, when you address the toxins, you got to detoxify properly, which now there's fantastic supplements for that. Yeah. And, you know, as opposed to like 10 or 20 years ago. And uh, so that's the toxic part. So clean that up. And then for excess sugar metabolism, you got to make sure that the liver is working well and the cells can detoxify, but primarily ketosis. That's the solution for that. Okay. And then, and then when it comes down to the bugs, you got to make sure the immune system is strong and uh, supplements and herbs specifically for whatever, you know, bugs there that are in the body. Okay. Well, let's talk about ketosis in a second, but I have a couple questions for you. So, um, first of all, you should know that Shane Harvey says that you're a rock star. Yeah. Hi, Shane. <laughs> Hey, Shane. <laughs> Shane's then, a rock star. Like, literally, he's a rock star. <laughs> literally? That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then Ben, I don't know if I'm bastardizing this name. Ben Maggior. Maggior. Um, how do you remove mycotoxins in the body? Is that also connected to ketosis, or is that something else? Uh, mycotoxins are removed through uh, detoxification products. So you just have to treat it as if it was aluminum or mercury oh so it's actually treated like a toxin and, and you would detox them hence right. the mycotoxins okay and so you'll talk right. a little bit about that as well um yeah. shane says hey man um and shane says he's still struggling with the weight issue starting to feel like the keto diet is just adding weight calorie intake is so high what are your comments about that darren well you can so to be in ketosis um it's just a matter of Increase in the fat versus protein plus carbs. So you can get there by eating the proper ratio, like grams of fat versus protein plus carbs. But the, if the calories are too high, you can still maintain weight. So that's what endurance athletes will do, 3,000, 4,000 calories a day, lots of exercise, and they maintain their weight. So it's just best to lower the calories down. And so so since, since he feels like he's adding on weight, you're suggesting keep the same elements in, but just reduce the um, calorie intake, so less. Right, keep like the ratio. Of the, right, keep the ratio the same, but then the calories can come. They can come all the way down to 800 calories, and it's not a low calorie diet, even though you're still eating low calories because now your body's burning the fat 
that you've been carrying around as opposed to the fat that you're eating. Okay, great. Well, we'll talk a little more about ketosis. Let me just get to one other question. Kathleen, um, had, she says here, lactic acidosis equals pH, that's acid versus alkaline. Is that correct? Do you want me to repeat uh, that? Technically, it's partially, it's partially correct. Okay. So, te so technically, lactic acidosis, you can have normal pH, but you, but you have these chemicals that act like acids. Now, you can have metabolic acidosis, which is um, an acidic pH in the body. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I answered that question. Kathleen, did he answer that question for you? She also mentioned that she's been trying apple cider vinegar, honey, warm water, coconut oil. Yeah, that sounds good. Great. Now, that, it depends on what you're trying to do. So right. if you're trying to get into ketosis, the honey may be hindering that. But and it depends on the quantities and how much, you know, coconut oil you're taking and all that. Right. Um, so, Kathleen, if, if that answers it for you, let us know. But if not, then feel free to ask. And anybody else, please feel free to comment or ask any questions for Darren. So, Darren, talk to us about ketosis and how a keto diet works. Okay. So, <clears throat> well, ketosis is a unique metabolic state that all of our ancestors went into, whether they knew it or not. And you can get into it from just by fasting. So a lot of people had no food for a period of time, maybe late winter. And I even have a patient from, she, she was born in the tropical area of India, where fruit is abundant all year round, every single day. And she said, though, in her religion, they don't eat one day a week. Oh, wow. So for, yeah, for her family, it's Sunday. They just don't eat any food. So even if there's abundant sugar, there's still traditionally some kind of a fasting state in traditional religion. So, so people have gotten into ketosis on purpose or not. And what it does is it, it turns your body into um, a catabolic state, meaning it breaks down unwanted tissue. So that includes skin tags, moles, cancer cells, fat cells get smaller. That's awesome. Uh, fibroids and cysts, right? And then when you burn sugar, that's an anabolic state, meaning you're building up tissue, include, you know, which could include muscle, but it also includes skin tags get bigger, cysts and fibroids and cancers and all that. Oh, wow. So ketosis turns off all that bad DNA. And um, it's sort of a big reset on the whole body is what it is. It's like Mother Nature put it there so that we can abuse our bodies like during the summer with all the fruit, you know, and then we gain a bunch of weight for the long winter ahead. Right. It, also, <laughs> yeah. it also slows our brain down. And then now, now it's winter time. We're in ketosis, and our body is warmer in ketosis. And then um, it's a it's a survival survival mechanism. So um, that's fascinating, and that makes sense because it's it's sort of ancestral in a sense, um, you know, which also falls in line with some of the paleo tenets. Um, Kathleen responded um, about the apple cider vinegar, honey, warm water, and coconut oil that she's doing it for anxiety and panic. What are your thoughts right. on that? Um, when it comes to anxiety and panic at attacks and the conditions, I mean, that is one of the premier symptoms of lactic acidosis and anxiety actually means tightening or narrowing. That's what the word means. Oh, so people wow. get it, they get it here and they feel like, oh, my heart and they start and their mind starts racing. It's a, it's a blood toxicity, not just here, but in the brain. I mean, that sounds and like so the thyroid's involved in that too. I mean, it's it's affected, right? Like all the little tiny glands, like the thyroid, adrenals. I mean, yeah, adrenal don't have for sure. Right, but but there's there's secondary and tertiary to the dirty blood, and to the liver not working well, and the muscles, the muscle cramping and the tightness, all that stuff is primary, and then adrenal, thyroid, that's secondary, and then hormones would be like way down the line, but yeah, um, we're, yeah. But like, but I haven't seen like one of the best supplements I've ever seen is Cataplex B or G for um, anxiety and panic. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think G that. is a little more calming and, and B, it depends, it's, I guess, on what you need. But B can be actually stimulating depending on the kind of uh, situation the person is. Right. So when I was having all my symptoms, I took, I was taking 20 Cataplex G a day for <laughs> a couple months and I was yeah. on it for over probably a year and a half I was on Wow, Darren, I didn't know. But man, it was, it was we lost half. touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so um, yeah. we have a comment here from Malik wants to know, is a keto diet good for kids? Um, it's good to have kids going to ketosis a few times um, a year, maybe. I mean, you don't want to overdo it. Now, the main uh, therapy for epilepsy for back in the 1920s and earlier was ketosis. And then the pharmaceutical companies made some medications that were really pretty good for epilepsy. And uh, ketosis just kind of went by the wayside. But what they figured out through the decades um, is that kids will lose their stature, like their height, uh -huh. while in ketosis. So severe epileptic kids will be shorter for 10 years, right? Oh and then goodness. they grow up with epilepsy. And now let's say they're, you know, 18 years old or whatever, or 16 years old, and they stop ketosis, they gain all their height back in a, in a large growth spurt. That's incredible how the body works. So, yeah. So if you put a kid through ketosis, just know that they may not grow for those few days or week or whatever they're in ketosis for. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Darren. We're out of time. It's 4.30. I want to thank you so much for coming and doing this with me. You guys, okay. um, after we finish this video and wrap it, in the description we'll have the info on how you can get tickets to the conference. Darren is one of many speakers that we have that are going to be talking to you about all the different options that you can do to take your health back into your own hands so that you can learn about how you can be in charge of your own health and stop turning it over without question to others. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And remember to treat the source, not the symptom. Bye. All right. You're welcome. Bye.